Don't fall on me. Good morning. Two YouTube videos, two days in a row, roughly. Ethan, what do you think? You're back in the swing of it. It's good. I am. Do you guys want me to continue doing YouTube? I'm not making any money. In fact, I'm losing money. Today we are going to change oil in the John Deere Excavator 210G. Nice thing about this is this is your oil filter. They, ooh, that's warm. Warmed everything up. They move it from that position right there is where it normally would be. And they just move it over with these lines to be right there. Is it metric? Do you yeah. think? So to get to the oil pan, you take this grate off, this cover, and you have these awesome Milwaukee sets, standard and metric, so you know what you need. Also, your creeper, your kneeling pad, is this cushy comforter. That's old. Makes it a lot easier to work underneath equipment. What size is it? Uh, 17 mil. 17. That is really odd. You think that would be 18. Come along as we change oil in the excavator and probably grease the machine as well. This excavator just keeps on giving. Okay, obviously drain plug. That's normally how we would do it. But look at this thing right here. This looks like some kind of spigot valve that I almost took a nap. I laid down in this down quilt comforter. You gotta be, you gotta be and careful. You know? It's way too early in the morning to be taking a nap. Oh, there's my half inch wrench. Okay, are these oil catch buckets directly underneath? You ready to go? Give me a roll of paper towels. Yeah, got it. I'll put that in there like that. Oh. Yep, it looks like it's going. Oh, I love this, Ethan. Oh, man. All the years of taking a plug out on most other vehicles. Also, since this is a five and a half gallon oil fill, I can shut it off and move buckets without getting oil all over creation, which is... Normally what happens when you're changing oil. Probably need to clean up that tree and all of that mud and debris. All of you construction excavator guys out there, how often do you clean your tracks? This is one of the coolest ways to change oil ever, Ethan. I love it. Good morning. Welcome to the mud of Nebraska. We have a problem here. It's this tire lost a bunch of air so welcome to saturday morning don't be discouraged the road is right there and also ethan so we can do this by hand but it's completely unnecessary when we have a telehandler we do have a is this a 38 tall tire at home milwaukee impact so this won't take very long and we can send it on its way it stopped raining in nebraska so these crops need Oh, you have boots. Good job. Welcome to detasseling. Do you remember when? Oh, yeah. This is, this is very easy for me. That's where Amanda is at this morning. We can just read the tire, bud. Yeah. But Papa Kurt would appreciate you carrying your <laughs> tape measure out here. I think this will be good. How thick? Actually, how thick is the rim? That's maybe going to be... That's one thing I need to know. I really like this machine. Bought it to help build my house years and years ago. Used it a little bit for that, but we definitely used it way more on the farm than anywhere else. Do you like my seat repair job? Gorilla tape. And that'll last another 10 years. Welcome to the boneyard or tree line. I would like to think that most every farm in America has a tree line like this filled with odds and ends that are kind of in your way. This is where we keep our old pivot tires, old ones, new ones, whatever we might need. Here's a shorter tire 
this is the tire that I'm looking for, 38. And it looks like it's a double walled rim. But I remember in the past we had thicker rims and one of them actually didn't fit on the gearbox. But on the swing arm, I think they can take thicker rims, more weight, heavier duty. We're gonna pick this one. That doesn't look, it looks doubled. I don't know if it's what I'm looking for, but it's what I need on a Saturday. So this is why you have spare parts on hand. So I will pick this with the telly. And okay, chain, walkie, what else do we need? I'm forgetting something, I'm pretty sure. Does it matter in this situation? Actually, I see that one is reversed. So, are we going to put this one on forward or backwards? I guess it depends on what direction you run the pivot. And stop. So, can I get this tire to stay up here a little bit? We love the clay in central Nebraska for its water holding ability. Is that right? Can we put it on this way or should we flip it around? I think we're gonna we're gonna flip it around. But we'll get uh, you got a chain? I do, yeah. So we'll put one up there and just lift it up in the air. And for building such a great gun throwback old man comment walking uphill in snow both ways to school i used to do this by hand with dad and sometimes my brother and having this tool to be able to take lug nuts off makes it faster easier and probably safer ah, don't fall on me Got it. Try to let this down gently. How much do you think this weighs? Uh, I don't know, like Heavy? two, 250. We'll weigh it when we get home, because now I'm curious. Ooh. All right, we might have to jack it up a little bit higher oh side note lead farm gloves get you a pair go to my son's etsy account on etsy.com david's prince and more actually he's camping out with his brother for 10 days and not running his etsy shop but in a couple of days it'll be back up and running and I have these gloves for sale on there, medium, large, and extra large. Get you a pair if you like being in mud or changing tires or if you like equipment. Or if you watch YouTube videos, I believe you need a pair of these gloves. Very durable and somewhat mud waterproof. We need to raise it higher. Can't tell you, Ethan, how often we had to high lift jack these things into position and it was too high, too low, too high, too low. I don't know why I say I can't tell you how many times. I can tell you a lot of times we would use a high lift jack and it would be up and down, up and down, up and down. Enough commentary, Dad. What, what uh, way?
for some reason, I didn't think mosquitoes would be out here this hot and humid morning. This is a swing arm to a pivot. Everybody knows a pivot is a straight line that makes a circle in a square field. This swing arm is one more tower that is bent out to the side. If this is your pivot, then this is your swing arm. So as you're coming around, it swings out to hit the corner and then comes in back over itself. And most of my pivots are now run by GPS, but the old style system, which this is, is a laser beam that follows a cable that is buried about three feet underground. And so these sensors right here, watch the laser beam and then they will move the, where's that gearbox? Okay, that gearbox right there turns both like a steering wheel, steering column to move it back and forth and follow these lasers. Upon further inspection, I can see these laser cords for the radar beam are dragging on the tire. Looks like we've even fixed one in the past. So now I'm going to scoot these wires back up in here and actually probably put a zip tie so we won't have an issue. So it's a good thing this tire failed out here, Ethan, because now we can do more maintenance. Does that make sense? Do we have any WD-40 or PB Blaster? What do you like to shoot on those? PB, PB is king. PB Blaster. All right. PB and J? For sure. <laughs> oh, no. How did that one come off? Maybe it wasn't on enough. Question for you, Ethan, or the audience. How do you guys like to put on nuts? Do you guys do a cross, star? Do you go around and then double tighten? Do you like to go back and forth? I kind of mix and match, do different things. That way it's a test and I can see which way was better the next time I'm out here changing the tire. That looks good. You're welcome, Megan. By the way, thanks, Megan. Hey, Megan, can we borrow your Defender to do this muddy job? Thank you, by the way. Also, love your tires, the supersized, oversized tires and rims. They do good in the mud. Yeah, which people are like, oh, why would you buy those? You're just showing off. You're just trying to... It did add three-inch lift to this machine, and they do look really awesome, but they work well in this particular situation. I do see we have a kinetic rope in the back and a two inch ball just in case. Ethan, did we make sure this tire had air in it before I brought it out? What if it's on the rim, but deflated? That is why we have a Milwaukee portable air compressor. We'll get that. I'll lower it down. We'll see how much squish factor it is. Meanwhile, you guys can check out this crop duster. I believe that is Boardman Ariel. He flew for grasshoppers the other day. It's going, getting to the season of applying fungicide to this corn crop is upon us. So we'll have a lot more aerial applicators bumping and moving around. All right, I'll lower it down here. Also, I really don't like the direction of this tire with the tread facing this way to scoop the mud out. We will be running the pivot this direction. And I can see that one is on backwards, probably part of the reason it got stuck maybe, but also the rim sticks out. If we would flip this tire around, the tire would run closer to this shaft. I think it would still have clearance and knock over less corn. I have to tell you once again, this is going to be a test. We're going to leave it like this, Ethan. You're going to tell me if it gets stuck again that we have to flip it and reverse it. Well, yeah, and clearance is an issue. You just don't want to wear on this dry shaft. That's a good. That's a good point. We're going to leave it alone. It's getting hot out here.
Watch your step, the mud is slippery. This mud is slippery, yes, but then it's sticky and gooey underneath. So if you stand in one spot for more than two and a half seconds, it will suction your boot right out. You can check your Duluth socks. Here we're going to go right up into this ring collar with this there. How's that? Is that going to... Save the day. Now will we have issues? I'm gonna put some more on. Side note, if you ever get a bag of Ziplocs or anything else, don't cut the top off. Cut it in the middle. That way, they can't spill out, but you can still grab them. Life lesson and hack for the day. Hope you're taking notes, folks. Congratulations, we made it out of the mud hole. How are we gonna get the tire? We gotta go back in the I forgot, yeah, I forgot to pick the tire. So I think we've got a good line here. I should be able to get it. Sorry about that. We will bring this tire to the co-op. Maybe they can save it, put a tube in it, maybe not. But the co-op does not love receiving tires with this much ooey gooey. So we are going to power wash this tire off.
your feet? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, typically I can run these pivots from my phone or my computer, but since it's safety timed out, I have to go to the actual pivot point to hold in the safety override to jump start it to get it to going, letting it know that I'm watching everything and it's okay, cool, calm, and collected. However, it rained, so I never needed to drive my four wheeler out to the pivot point it won't rained all spring all first part of the summer dad was a big proponent of locking a corn row out when you're planting or three rows so you can drive a pickup one row so you can drive a four-wheeler i like to just plant and go and not think about it well now i realize why dad said that you should probably do that so you don't end up in this situation because i already always told myself I'll just mow down the row. Well, now it's super tall and I'll have to drive through and pick and choose. And hopefully this is the center point. I am, I just planted everything. I have no roads, no end rows. Well, the end row, everything is just planted. Doesn't maybe look the best, but we got a ton of corn out here. So I'm gonna pick that spot right there and we'll see where we end up. Good guess, Carlson. This 510, go ahead. Uh, I'm out at the swing arm, so just let me know. Oh, it's running right now. All right, I hit the safety override. This, this uh, meter right here to do screen darkness doesn't work, so it is on super darkness. But I think I can see green. In there, we're running forward. All right, I'll run it at 100% for a little bit. And just like that, the pivot is moving. We got uh, Dad at the pivot point, and I'm here to watch to make sure everything's going good. On the irrigation circuit for 2024 I have a wedding to go to in about one hour so we are going to start two pivots this motor belongs to that pivot not this one we got our Cummins for this pivot motor forgot about batteries forgot about drip oil forgot about irrigation it's hotter than July 4th out here mostly because July 4th was a relatively cool day will i remember how to irrigate how to start this machine oil drip oil blah 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 Moment of truth. This is a good sign that the battery was disconnected. But did it run out of juice before I disconnected it? We have fuel, fuel barrels on, PTO disengaged.
Good evening. Good Sunday evening. All right, sorry about that pause. I hope you enjoyed the sunset and the humidity here in Nebraska. We are trying to get this pivot going, but it's not going, and I'm not sure what the problem is. This end tower is moving, but the swing arm is not. So we're going to move over to there. Seed corn field, soybeans over here for a pollination blocker from that commercial corn. Males here, females over there. Ethan in the center of the field. I wanted to get on here and talk a little bit, but now I'm not. I just want you guys to be happy. Um, I really love and enjoy Nebraska, small town Nebraska, out here, what I'm doing. I enjoy the freedom to work, work hard, raise a family, and I've just really appreciated my life so far and I hope you guys do too I hope you go out um don't be afraid of risk looking at the risk reward for um starting a family or working starting a job working really hard and living life there's a lot of great things out here in life and I just want to be really encouraging to you guys okay Back to fixing the pivot. We did get other one, one other pivot going, so most of them are going. Tomorrow's Monday, and we will fire up everything else tomorrow. So should I make a video about that? I think I could. It's going to be beautiful. It takes a little bit. Um, we got bigger problems here. I think I got a bad motor. It's just humming. All right. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Get a good night's sleep. Drink plenty of water and get good rest. Try to get more hours of rest. Turn off the TV. Put the phone away and you'll do a lot better. Shut this YouTube video off and wait for tomorrow. Get good sleep. See you guys.